TV with theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go onto the events and find to the best, smartest people we can, talk to them, extract their knowledge, CEOs, bloggers, executives, anyone with knowledge, we want to bring that out and share to you. Go deep, 20 hours of programming, and uh, I'm really excited to go deep with HP because HP is retooling, Apple gets all the headlines, Microsoft once got all the headlines, and we have two guests from Microsoft I'm, I'm excited to talk about because Microsoft is going through a transformation, and uh, HP and Microsoft are great partners. So my guests, my two guests here from Microsoft is Bernardo Zamara, Group Product Manager, Business Platform Marketing, and Ed Anderson, Director of Marketing, Server and Tools. Okay, so you got Product Manager for Platform and Server and Tools. Yes. Thanks for Welcome to the us Cube, here. guys. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having yeah. us. Uh, Microsoft, um, I've been critical of, but I'm a big Microsoft fan mm -hmm. from from back in the '80s when I was getting my computer science degree. Big fan of the company. Watched the rise of Microsoft over the years, and then watched the government take the heart out of the company. <laughs> and uh, now that that those shackles are gone, Microsoft's doing a lot of things. They're still a big company like HP. Uh, but they know their stuff when it comes to platforms and tools. And so what I want to talk to you guys about today is um, around the, the me the, those mega trends around platform and tools because this is just the same old movie that was played hmm. a couple decades ago in a new form and new actors and new technologies, new architectures. So, so uh, first, Ed, start with us, take us through some of the things that you're seeing here at HP Discover, and then how does that relate it to the overall arc of Microsoft? And obviously your relationship with HP is longstanding. Um, and so take us through the, your vision there. Yeah, I think you make some important observations. You know, history sort of repeats itself um, <laughs> as we cycle through different technology trends. Um, this is a really interesting time in the industry, though, because I think of, of all the things that are happening, uh, some of the new innovations, the new ways uh, people are thinking about their business and the way technology supports them will be things that will uh, change and transform our industry forever. Um, Good examples of that are, are cloud computing, um, you know, and the way we think about our business data and, and incorporating that into our, you know, our everyday business processes. So as you mentioned, uh, Microsoft and HP have been partners for virtually as long as the companies have been around. Um, and uh, recently we have renewed that partnership, uh, both in terms of, of, you know, working together on some of these big trends and opportunities but I think uh, more notably by really doubling down on some of the investments that we're making together so that we can orchestrate both the innovation and the products and our, you know, our go-to-market or the way we interact with customers together in a, in a more guys, significant way. I mean, I mean way. HP, like Microsoft, they're huge companies, a lot of muscle, a lot of legacy too. You have you know, existing huge enterprise business. Up and up and down and around the product set. So, so you're kind of changing the airplane engine in mid-flight mm -hmm. at 35,000 feet in terms of trying to transform with the marketplace. How do you guys look at that? And obviously, you know, you're all in the news, obviously, all the time. You know, some of the sizzle that's out there is the Xbox is going to have a cloud storage. Um, you acquired Skype, and these are kind of new signals. You got Bing integrating into Facebook, so you have all these initiatives on a lot of different flanks, and obviously the Nokia relationship. So Microsoft's hustling. You can see some movement in the troops. So how is that kind of trickling down into the existing partnerships? And uh, you know, I made a comment yesterday that you know, looking at HP's partnership track record, it really sets the stage for this hybrid cloud. Um, the private cloud is kind of like this market where, oh, it sounds good, a journey, no one really knows what it is, it's kind of a data center play, public is out there, you guys are playing in that market, but hybrid seems to be the sweet spot. So, what's your, what's your take on that as you're moving through the existing legacy and the new stuff coming on? How is that all going to fit together? Yeah, I mean, that, we think that's one of the biggest transformations that's happening in the industry is customers want the flexibility and uh, cost effectiveness of being able to to move some of those uh, those resources to a more efficient infrastructure, whether it be the way they implement a cloud environment in their own data center, or whether they push it off to some uh, provider to to source it for them and and provide those services for them. Um, you know, the other thing we're we're seeing a lot is that the way customers are consuming technology is. It, it takes into account the best of what companies like Microsoft do, but also what companies like HP does as well. And so thinking about how to package that stuff together into form factors that can move more easily into those customers' environments is a pretty yeah. significant trend right now. Uh, let me add to add, Ed, um, customers are looking at the cloud as a possible option, but they also have a legacy, as you said. So one of the things that uh, HP and Microsoft offer together is an opportunity to take the hybrid approach. They can continue using HP and Microsoft products on-premise, 
they can fully go to the cloud, but they also can transition through all the stages through a private cloud, for example, all using the same tool technologies from Microsoft and HP. So that thing uh, provides a lot of uh, flexibility to the customers to grow and adapt to the cloud at their own pace. You know, it's interesting, you know, I mean, I've been following, I'll say this, the tech business for many, many years and, and being part of it, it's fun to watch. I mean, I remember the voice over IP days was a big, oh yeah, voice over IP. You know, the digital PBX with all the folks out there who don't know what that is, it's been dead for a long time. It's embedded as a feature. So you got voice and now you got data services. And so, you know, the market's changed, but it really hasn't. The end result is people still have mobile devices. They still want to connect to the enterprise, as Leo was saying, and you guys were talking about in the keynote. So the question, Bernardo, for you is unified communications. That market is changing rapidly, and you guys have acquired Skype, which is, does a lot of that voice over IP that stuff and video. Um, you guys you have a uh, unified communications uh, division. How is that changing with this new marketplace? Wow, that's a great question. I'm not, the, I think, the expert on unified communications, so I don't want to trip over. I don't know, Ed, if you have uh, more yeah, recent I, information. Yeah, I think in the end it comes back to this whole notion of what we think about with the cloud, which is the ability to be able to connect to something bigger than yourself and get access to the data and services you want. And when people think about unified communications, it's more than just being able to connect two endpoints. It's also about you know, I want to use whatever device is in front of me. You know, maybe a laptop, maybe a cell phone, maybe, you know, just a, a standard telephone. You know, and, and what we're doing in terms of, you know, the acquisitions and investments we're making is really to make sure that we have the set of technologies and capabilities and innovations that allow Microsoft to be able to deliver whatever the experience is the customers want. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I think that's an interesting market because that, that unified communication has changed. The question that we are also hearing from customers that we talk to that come on is, the user experience is now a big thing. And we were at Citrix Synergy last week and they were talking about user experience, mm -hmm. designing for the user experience. Obviously they were pushing desktop virtualization mm -hmm. um, and you guys have a competing product with, uh, against them with Hyper-V and you're in that marketplace. So, so you guys understand uh, user experience, you know, obviously with, mm -hmm. with, your, with your software that you guys make. So how is that, what's your vision on the user experience that we're seeing? Well, th that's a great point. What, um, from a server and tools perspective, what we're hearing from customers is that they really have a lot of complexity they have to deal with. Uh, they, they have a lot more data that they have to manage. And it's really difficult to just make sense of all of it and make manage it. Uh, so some of the announcements we did uh, earlier on the week was actually to help customers address that complexity, address that need to deliver solutions much faster. Uh, the two things that we announced uh, yesterday were the data warehouse appliance that allows customers insight very quickly because before it, 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 they found it was really difficult to, to gather and analyze all that data. That, that's part of the feedback we're getting. And the other solution we announced was a private cloud solution. It's a database consolidation solution that addresses the other feedback we've heard about complexity of managing hundreds of different servers out there. So, so that's how we're getting the different feedback into products. How has the data warehouse market changed? You brought up data warehouse, that's we've been covering that. I mean, obviously with big mm. data and low latency mobile devices, and you know, the data warehouse market, business intelligence, whatever yeah. you want to call it, ties to some of the sizzle we're hearing. We saw business yeah. analytics, we see your real-time information. These are all hot, you know, hot mm. trends, right? So. Yeah. The data warehouse market was this old fenced in, you know, send the data out, pull it back. I mean, you know, it, but that's now has to be more mainstream. They want low latency archive recovery for data. So yeah. what's your uh, view of the change in the data warehouse market? There are several trends that we're seeing in the data warehousing market. The first one is the amount of data. The amount of data we're seeing in customers is huge. Actually, there's a, there's a customer we're working that has 16 petabytes of data that they analyze day to day. Uh, so so the, the customers are just storing videos and tweets and emails and, and documents. So the amount of data is growing. The second point is that, as you said, customers and users want to access it from everywhere. They want to use it in their device. They want to use it on the cloud. They want to use it on premise. Um, between those two trends, then uh, you have the need to analyze all that data, provide it in all different devices very rapidly. With low latency. Uh, quick question on that is, what, what disruptive enabler from a technology standpoint do you see in that space? Because um, you talk about that's a lot of, yeah. 60 petabytes is a large number, and people are going there. It's, you're seeing a lot of customers moving to that high amount of data that they have to data mine and get out yeah. quick. Is there any disruptive technologies you're seeing, like, you know, obviously concurrency is one in these kinds of environments where you got Hadoop out there and the open yeah. source side. What, what tech is out there? 
Uh, there's several important trends that are uh, n just being developed right now to be able to address that need. One of them is cloud, to be able to provide some of that information through the cloud to all the different media. Uh, the other one is massively parallel solutions. So before you, you only had individual appliances or solutions, now you can connect many of them. Hadoop is one example that you can connect many of them, analyze petabytes of data. Um, and then traditional concepts that are becoming more mainstream, that like column-based storage. Uh, all of those are helping manage the enormous amount of data that is out there. Okay, final one minute and getting the hook here. We got that one quick question. So real quickly, you know, obviously Microsoft platforms and tools have always been a big part of you know, the core technology you guys are doing. You guys are on the front lines, talking to customers. You're in the divisions at Microsoft. Can you just share with the folks on your parting comment um, what, what's going on with Microsoft? Give them a quick bumper sticker about some of the things you're excited about uh, at Microsoft. Yeah, and I think you characterized it pretty well when we opened that uh, this, you know, this is a time of transformation for the company. Um, I think we've been pretty clear that we see the cloud as the direction for us to go, not just as a, as a technology yeah. innovator, but in response to the demands of our customers to be able to have more flexibility and cost effectiveness in the way they, they operate their environments. And you know we're making a big bet and uh, putting everything the company has into making sure this transformation works across all the different product lines we have. Yeah. I think it's a great point, but also we have to consider that customers are moving to the cloud at a different paces. So we're providing appliances or solutions that are extremely fast to deploy locally in a traditional data center, hybrid solutions that you said with HP, and then also starting to develop the cloud from an infrastructure and database perspective so they can they can have the go whole gamut of options to be agile in what the customers and users want. Absolutely. Bernardo and Ed, thank you for coming inside theCUBE. Pleasure to have you. Thanks for Please having take us. Care.